here we've got the inverse trig functions. We've got arc sine, which is the inverse of sine, arc cos, which is the inverse of cos, and arc tan, which is the inverse of tan. You will have already used these solving any kind of trigonometric equation. And on a calculator, that's shift sine, shift cos, and shift tan. So these are the inverses of the trig functions. So they do the opposite of a trig function. And on a graph, they're a reflection in the line x equals y. So we're going to look at using these now. So find in radians, arc sine 0 0.8. So on a calculator, that's shift sine 0 0.8. So make sure we're in radians and shift sine 0 0.8. And for three significant figures, we've got 0 0.927. Arc cos 0 0.21, so shift cos 0 0.21. And that for three significant figures is 1.36. So these are radians. And arc tan minus one, so shift tan minus one. And that gives us minus one quarter pi. Okay, now we're going to look at the graphs of these inverse trig functions. So we're going to start with the original y equals sine x, and then we're going to draw, draw the inverse of it, y equals arc sine x. So for the original, we're limiting the domain to make it a one-to-one -one function. So we're only going to draw the, the function, only going to draw y equals sine x between minus pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and positive pi over 2. So the key points of the graph, so it's going to go through minus pi over 2, minus 1. It's going to go through 0, 0, and it's going to go through pi over 2, positive 1. And we're going to get a graph that looks like this. So that's our original y equals sine x. The inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. And if we think about our key points, for an inverse, the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. The input becomes the output and the output becomes the input. So minus pi over 2 minus 1 will now be minus 1 minus pi over 2. It will still go through 0, 0, and pi over 2, 1 will now be 1 pi over 2. And then we're just going to draw the reflection and there we have our inverse function. So there we have y equals arc sine x. So the range of the original function was between negative 1 and positive 1. So now for the inverse function, the domain is between negative 1 and positive 1, and the range is the domain of the original so between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So the domain has become the range and the range has become the domain. Okay, let's look at y equals cos x now. And this time we're limiting the domain to between 0 and pi. So the range of the original function will still be between negative 1 and positive 1. And we're going to draw this function. So it's going to go through 0, 1, pi over 2, 0, and pi negative 1. If we draw the original function, which is something like that. And now we're going to reflect it. So we've got the line y equals x again. 
and let's look at the key points for the inverse function now. So 0, 1 becomes 1, 0. Pi over 2, 0 becomes 0 pi over 2. And pi minus 1 will become minus 1 pi. So then we'll draw the reflection. And there's our arc cos function. The domain will be between minus 1 and plus 1. So the domain of the inverse is the range of the original. And the range of the inverse is the domain of the original. And finally, we've got y equals 10x. And we're going to draw y equals arc 10x. The range of y equals 10x, so 10x is a set of real numbers. There's no limit on the range of 10x. We've got the domain limited between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So that's between the two asymptotes. And the original function looks like this. So let's draw y equals x again. And now let's draw the reflection of it. So the asymptotes were where, where x equals minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. They will now be where y equals pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. It's still going to go through 0, 0. And we'll just draw the reflection on now. So it's going to cross over, cross back at 0, 0. And then the same again on the other side. So there's the graph of arc 10x. And arc 10x will have no limit on its domain so x will be from the set of real numbers no limits on its domain and the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original function here are a few equations involving the inverse trig functions if you had an equation with arc sine in it the way to get rid of arc sine, well, the inverse of arc sine, is sine. So if we apply sine to both sides, sine x, if we apply sine to both sides, we'll get 2x equals sine pi over 4. And to get x by itself, we divide by 2. So we'll have sine pi over 4 over two in this case and we can just type that into the calculator and we'll get root two over four solve arc tan x equals 0 0.5 so again to apply to get rid of arc tan x we apply tan to both sides so the opposite of arc tan is tan So we've just got 10 0 0.5, type it in the calculator, and we get out 0 0.546 to three significant figures.